So what you're, the, the beeps you're hearing are real-time signals from the neural link in Gertrude's head. So this neural link connects to neurons that are uh, in her snout. So whenever she snuffles around and touches something with her snout, the, that sends out uh, neural spikes, which are detected here. All right, welcome to the Neuralink product demo. I'm really excited to show you what we've got. I think it's gonna blow your mind. Um, so I wanna emphasize the, the purpose of Neuralink. Like, uh, what do we, what's our goal? Our goal is to solve important spine and brain problems with a seamlessly, seamlessly implant, implanted device. So you wanna have a device that you can basically uh, put in your head um, and feel and look totally normal, uh, but it solves uh, some, some important problem um, in your brain or spine. So uh, going into the Neuralink architecture, uh, what we've done over the past year is dramatically simplify the device. So we, 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 about a year ago, we had a device which uh, had uh, uh, m multiple parts, including a piece that it had to sort of sit behind your ear. Um, and it was, it, was, it was complex, and you, and you wouldn't still look totally normal. You'd have a thing behind your ear. So um, we've simplified this to simply something that is uh, about the size of a large coin. Um, and it, it goes uh, in your skull, replaces a piece of skull, um, and the wires uh, uh, then, then connect uh, within a few centimeters or about an inch away from the device. Um, and this is sort of what it looks like. So, yeah. <laughs> this is our little device. Uh, it does, that, that thing at the bottom is just to hold the threads in place because they're just like little fine wire, wires. Um, I, I mean, fr frankly, to, to sort of simplify this, uh, what, what we're, <laughs> I mean, it's more complicated than this, but it's, in a lot of ways, it's kind of like a Fitbit in your skull with tiny wires. Our, our, Current prototype version 0.9 has about a thousand channels, uh, so that's you know, about a hundred times better than the the next best um, uh, consumer device that's available. And it's a 23 millimeters by eight millimeters. It actually uh, fits quite nicely in your skull because your, your skull is about 10 millimeters thick, so uh, it fits. It's, it goes flush with your skull. It's invisible, and all you can see afterwards is that there's a tiny scar. And if it's under your hair, you can't see it at all. In fact, I could have a neural link right now, and you wouldn't know. All right, so it's also inductively charged. So um, it's charged in the same way that you, char you charge a smartwatch or a phone. Um, and so you can use it all day, uh, charge it at night, and have full functionality. So you would really, um, you know, it would be, it would be completely seamless. Uh, and uh, yeah, no wires. Uh, in terms of getting a link, so that, um, we, you need to have the device uh, a great device, and you also need to have a great robot that uh, puts in the, uh, the electrodes and uh, does the surgery. So you want the surgery to be as, as automated uh, and, and as possible, and the only way you can achieve the level of precision that's needed is with an advanced robot. Uh, the link procedure, the, the installation of a link, done in under an hour. Um, so you can basically go in in the morning and leave the hospital in the afternoon. And it can be done without general anesthesia. So this is our surgical robot. And we actually ultimately want this robot to do uh, essentially the entire surgery. Uh, so in, in everything from, from in, incision, uh, removing the, the skull, inserting the electrodes, placing the device, um, and then um, closing things up and having you ready to, to leave. So we want to have a fully automated system. So this, this shows you um, at sort of a close-up view uh, which I think is actually not too gruesome, uh, of the electrodes being inserted in the brain. And if you look closely, you'll see that um, that's a, it's a little counterintuitive that uh, if the electrodes are inserted very carefully, that there is no bleeding. Um, and so the, uh, if you have very tiny electrodes and if they're inserted very carefully, so that the robot actually images the brain and makes sure to avoid any veins or arteries, so that the electrodes can be inserted um, with no noticeable damage. So you will have no noticeable 
uh, neural damage uh, in inserting the link. So does it actually work? And uh, what I'm excited to show you, um, I'll quote like, the, the Three Little Pigs demo, um, and uh, if our uh, animal handlers, we're bring, bringing out the, the pigs, and what we're going to show you is a, well, I'll walk right over and show you. So what we have in pen number one is Joyce, uh, and she does not have an implant. <laughs> Obviously, healthy and happy. Um, <laughs> we're trying to get Gertrude out. And this is how you know it's a live demo. So here's Dorothy. Um, and in the case of Dorothy, um, Dorothy used to have an implant, and then we removed the implant. So this is uh, an, a very important thing to uh, demonstrate is reversibility. So if you, if you have a neural link, and then you decide you don't want it, or you want to get an upgrade, and the neural link is removed, um, is it removed in such a way that you are still healthy and happy afterwards? And what Dor Dorothy illustrates is that you can put in the neural link, remove it, and be healthy, happy, and indistinguishable from a normal pig. Oh, thanks, Dorothy. <laughs> Here we go. Great. OK. Great. <laughs> OK. This is a, a high-energy pig. Um, all right. Gertrude, thanks for coming out. Um, so what you're, the, the beeps you're hearing are real-time signals from the neural link in Gertrude's head. So this neural link connects to neurons that are uh, in her snout. So whenever she snuffles around and touches something with her snout, the, that sends out uh, neural spikes, which are detected here. Um, and so on the screen, um, you can see uh, each, each of the, the spikes from the 1,024 electrodes. And, and then if, you, if she, yeah, she snuffles around, touches this snout in the ground, or you kind of feed her some food, pigs love food, um, then uh, you, you can see the neurons um, will fire much more than when you're not touching this snout. And uh, that's what's making the, the beeping sound. All right, cool. So as you can see, uh, we have a healthy and happy pig. Um, initially shy, but obviously high energy and, and uh, you know, kind of loving life. And uh, she's had the implant for two months. So this is a healthy and happy pig with an implant that is two, month old, two months old and working well. Yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> um, and then um, we actually have, I'm sure, <laughs> I hope this works, is so we said, well, what if we do two Neuralink implants? Um, and we've been able to uh, do uh, dual Neuralink implants uh, in, th um, actually, I think three pigs at this point, And we have a couple of them here. Um, and we've been able to show that you can actually have multiple Neuralinks implanted. Um, and again, healthy and happy and indistinguishable from a normal pig. So, um, so it's possible to have multiple links in your, in your head and have them all be sending out signals, and we are working well. All right, so we just showed you a demonstration of uh, reading brain activity. And um, let's see, you probably see that. Um, as I was saying, uh, each of those dots represents a neural spike, and the, um, the, the blue chart at the bottom is showing an accumulation of neural spikes in that region. So uh, in, in, in terms of additional uh, brain reading activity. Uh, when we have, um, say, um, one of our pigs on a treadmill, <laughs> pig on a treadmill. <laughs> um, it's a funny, funny concept, really. Um, and we uh, take the, the readings from the neurons and we try to predict the posi position of the joints. Um, and so we say we have the predicted position of the joints, and then we, we measure the actual position of the joints. You can see that they're almost exactly aligned. So we're able with um, a wireless neural, imp neural implant to actually predict the position of, of all of the limbs uh, in the pig's body uh, with, with very high accuracy. Now, in terms of, of writing to the brain or stim stimulating neurons, uh, we obviously need pr precise control of the electric field in, in space and time. We need a wide range of current for different brain regions. Uh, some, some regions require delicate stimulation. Some require a lot of current. Uh, and, and you want, obviously, no harm to the brain over time. Um, and the way we, um, part of the way we analyze the, 
the stimulate, stimulating neurons uh, is with a two-photon uh, microscopy. I, I always have trouble pronouncing that microscopy. Um, and uh, it's very impressive technology. You can actually literally see in real time uh, how the neurons are firing. So uh, the, the red sort of things are the neurons, red, red sort of flashing things are the neurons uh, firing, or I should say the, uh, uh, the electrodes firing. So the red things are electrodes firing, and then the green are the neuron bodies responding to uh, the current from the electrode. And we're making good progress towards clinical studies. Um, I'm excited to announce that we received a, a breakthrough device designation from the FDA in July, uh, thanks to the hard work of the Neuralink team. So, So I want to be clear, we're working closely with the FDA um, and we'll, um, we'll be extremely rigorous. In fact, we will, um, we will significantly, significantly exceed the minimum FDA guidelines for uh, safety. We will make this uh, as safe as possible. But what are some likely first applications? So our, our first clinical trial is aimed at uh, people with paraplegia or, or tetraplegia, uh, so cervical spinal cord injury. We're going to enroll, uh, we plan to enroll a small number of patients uh, to make sure the device is safe and that it works in that case. Uh, yeah, so actually just to elaborate on that, um, if somebody is um, like a severe spinal cord injury, uh, you know, to the degree that they, they even, they have um, very limited control even uh, over their facial muscles. I think something that's very exciting as a long-term application is if you, can, if you can sense what somebody's trying to do with their limbs, what they want to do with their limbs, um, then you can actually uh, uh, do a second implant that's at the base of the spine or, or wherever, just after wherever the spinal injury occurred, and you can, you can create a neural shunt. Uh, so we, I, I think long-term, I'm confident that long-term uh, it will be possible to restore somebody's full body motion. Uh, another question from Twitter, will you be able to save and replay memories in the future? Uh, yes, I think uh, in the future you will be able to save and re replay memories. Um, I mean, this is obviously sounding increasingly like a Black Mirror episode, um, but uh, well, I guess they're pretty good at predicting. Um, but yeah, essentially, if, if you have a whole brain interface, everything that's encoded in memory, you could uh, you could upload. You could basically store your memories um, as a backup and restore the memories. Um, and ultimately, you could potentially download them into a new body or into a robot body. The future is going to be weird. Uh, one common theme that's been coming up a lot on these Twitter questions coming in is that of availability. And so Matthias has a specific question on this, which is any estimate of how much it will cost at launch and what price it will reduce to over time? Well, I, I think at, at launch, it's probably going to be... It, it, I, I would say that's not really representative because um, at first I think it's, it's going to be you know, quite expensive, but that price will very rapidly drop. Um, and I think over time we want to get the, the cost um, obviously down as low as possible, um, but I think um, I inclusive of the automated surgery, I think we want to get the, 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 the price down to a few thousand dollars, something like that. Um, and I, I think that's possible. I think it should be possible to get it similar to um, LASIK and, and then the uh, device electronics itself, um, I think will, will not be very expensive um, because it actually does, does use a lot of the parts that are made in extremely high volume in tens of millions of, of units uh, for uh, smartphones and, and smartwatches and wearables in general.